In July 2024, a chilling revelation set shockwaves through the cybersecurity world. Threat actors had discovered a way to exploit ServiceNow, a platform used by countless organizations worldwide. Government agencies and private firms alike found themselves in the crosshairs of a massive data theft campaign. But how did this happen? And what does it mean for the future of digital security? Let's dive in. If you're concerned about the safety of your personal data or your organization's sensitive information, you must watch this video until the end. So, let's get started. Our story begins on July 10th, 2024. ServiceNow, a cloud-based platform used by hundreds of thousands of organizations to manage their digital workflows, had just released a series of hotfixes. These were your run-of-the-mill updates. They were addressing critical vulnerabilities that could potentially expose vast amounts of sensitive data. ServiceNow helps organizations manage everything from IT services and operations to employee workflows and customer service. It's the backbone of digital operations for public sector organizations, healthcare providers, financial institutions, and large enterprises across the globe. With nearly 300,000 internet exposed instances, it's a tempting target for cyber criminals. The vulnerabilities in question were no small matter. The most critical CVE 2024 4879 received a CVSS score of 9.3 out of 10. In the world of cybersecurity, that's equivalent to a five alarm fire. This flaw allowed unauthorized users to perform remote code execution on multiple versions of the now platform. In simpler terms, it gave hackers the keys to the kingdom. The next day, on July 11th, researchers from AssetNote, who had discovered the flaw, published a detailed write-up. They didn't just discuss CVE 2024 4879, they revealed two more vulnerabilities, CVE 2024 5178 and CVE 2024 5217. When chained together, these flaws could grant an attacker full access to an organization's ServiceNow database. Now, you might think that organizations would rush to apply the patches. Unfortunately, the reality of cybersecurity is rarely that simple. Patching takes time, especially in large organizations with complex systems, and in that window of vulnerability, cyber criminals were quick to act. Within hours of the vulnerabilities being made public, GitHub, a platform used by developers worldwide was flooded with working exploits. These weren't just proof of concept codes, they were fully functional tools that could scan networks and identify vulnerable ServiceNow instances. ReSecurity, a cybersecurity firm, began monitoring the situation. What they saw was alarming. Multiple victims were identified, including government agencies, data centers, energy providers, and even software development firms. The attackers were casting a wide net, and they were catching big fish. But how exactly were these attacks carried out? First, the attackers would use bulk network scanners to identify potential targets. These scanners would probe the internet, looking for ServiceNow instances that hadn't yet been patched. Once a vulnerable instance was found, the real attack began. The first payload was relatively simple. It was designed to check if the system was indeed vulnerable to exploitation. The attackers would inject a piece of code and look for a specific result in the server's response. If this initial probe was successful, they moved on to the second stage. This payload was more sophisticated. It was designed to check the contents of the ServiceNow database. If successful, it would return details about the database structure and contents. The final stage was the most damaging. The attackers would attempt to dump user lists and collect associated metadata from compromised instances. In many cases, they were able to extract usernames and passwords. Some of you may think that the passwords were encrypted. Well, yes and no. While most of the extracted passwords were indeed hashed, a form of one-way encryption, some instances actually exposed plain text passwords. The impact of these attacks was far-reaching. We Securities monitoring revealed that within just one week, multiple organizations across various geographies and market verticals were targeted. Among the victims were an energy corporation potentially putting critical infrastructure at risk, a data center organization which could have led to cascading breaches for their clients, a government agency in the Middle East raising significant national security concerns, 
in a software development house, which risked compromising countless other systems. What's particularly concerning is that many of these organizations were unaware of the released patch. Some were using outdated or poorly maintained instances, often managed by their developers and software engineers. This highlights a critical weakness in many organizations' cybersecurity strategies, the failure to keep up with the latest patches and updates. But why is ServiceNow such an attractive target for cyber criminals? To understand this, we must delve into the dark web, where a thriving underground economy exists. Free securities researchers discovered increased chatter on multiple underground forums. Threat actors were actively seeking compromised access to IT service desks, corporate portals, and other enterprise systems that typically provide remote access to employees and contractors. These systems are gold mines for cyber criminals, offering opportunities for pre-positioning, attack planning, and surveillance. It's expected that a new player in the cybercrime world will emerge from this, Initial Access Brokers, or IABs. These cyber criminals specialize in gaining initial access to corporate networks and then selling this access to other bad actors. They will likely monetize access to compromised enterprise portals and applications on the dark web, leveraging InfraStealer's malware and digital identity leaks. To understand how we arrived at this point, it's essential to examine the underlying issues. The core problem stems from three critical vulnerabilities in ServiceNow's platform. The most severe of these is CVE-2024-4879, which has a CVSS score of 9.3. This vulnerability allows unauthenticated users to execute code remotely within the ServiceNow platform, making it particularly dangerous as it requires no authentication. Anyone on the internet could potentially exploit it. Another high-risk vulnerability is CVE-2024-5217, with a CVSS score of 9.2. Like CVE-2024-4879, it enables remote code execution granting attackers the ability to run arbitrary commands on the targeted system. Lastly, CVE-2024-5178, although less severe with a CVSS score of 6.9, still poses a significant threat. It allows administrative users to access sensitive files on the web application server without authorization. What makes these vulnerabilities particularly dangerous is that they can be chained together. An attacker could use CVE-2024-4879 to gain initial access, CVE-2024-5217 to escalate privileges, and then CVE-2024-5178 to access sensitive files. It's a hacker's dream scenario. This exploitation works as the attack begins with title injection. The attacker injects malicious code into a part of the ServiceNow platform that handles page titles. This might seem innocuous, but it's the foot in the door that attackers need. Next comes Template Injection Mitigation Bypass. ServiceNow, like many platforms, has safeguards in place to prevent template injection hacks. However, the attackers found a way to bypass these safeguards, allowing them to inject and execute malicious templates. Finally, there's the File System Filter Bypass. ServiceNow has filters in place to prevent unauthorized access to the file system, but again, the attackers found a way around these filters, allowing them to access and manipulate files they shouldn't be able to touch. When these three techniques are chained together, the result is full remote code execution and potential access to the entire ServiceNow database. The implications of this are staggering. ServiceNow instances often contain a treasure trove of sensitive information. We're talking about employee data, customer information, internal communications, and even details about an organization's IT infrastructure. In the wrong hands, this information could be used for everything from identity theft to corporate espionage. Once attackers have access to a ServiceNow instance, they can use it as a launchpad for further attacks. They might use the compromised system to send phishing emails to employees or customers. They could use the information they've gathered to craft highly targeted spear phishing attacks, or they might use their access to pivot to other systems within the organization's network. The potential for damage is enormous. Financial losses from data breaches can run into millions of dollars, but the cost isn't just financial. There is also the reputational damage to consider. Organizations that suffer data breaches often face a loss of customer trust, which can take years to rebuild. 
But let's zoom out for a moment and consider the broader implications of this attack. First, it highlights the increasing sophistication of cyber attacks. The attackers in this case didn't just exploit a single vulnerability, they chained together multiple flaws to create a devastating attack. This level of complexity is becoming more common, making it harder for organizations to defend themselves. Second, it underscores the importance of prompt patching. ServiceNow released fixes for these vulnerabilities on July 10th, 2024. Yet, even a week later, tens of thousands of systems remained vulnerable. This delay in applying patches is a common problem in cybersecurity, and it's one that attackers are all too happy to exploit. Third, it shows how quickly attackers can mobilize once a vulnerability is disclosed. Within hours of the vulnerabilities being made public, exploits were already circulating on GitHub. This rapid weaponization of vulnerabilities is a growing trend, and it means that the window between a vulnerability being disclosed and it being exploited is shrinking. However, perhaps the most important lesson from the service that exploit is the need for a shift in how we think about cybersecurity. Too often, Security is treated as an afterthought, something to be bolted on after systems are already in place. The service that exploit shows why this approach is no longer sufficient. Instead, we need to embrace the concept of security by design. This means building security into systems from ground up, considering potential vulnerabilities and attack vectors at every stage of development and deployment. It means treating security not as a separate function, but as an integral part of every IT and business process. What do you think about the service now exploit and its implications? Have you ever been affected by a data breach? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.